What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be talking about installing Plex on Windows. So this is something that's been brought up a couple times in my comments when I do some Plex videos or anything else. A lot of people don't want to use Linux, they want to use a Windows machine. So today we're going to go over how to set up Plex, uh, your Plex MIDI server on a Windows machine. So let's get right into it. One more thing, I'm going to be using a Windows server machine. It's the same as using Windows 10. Um, we're going to go over what Plex supports in a second, but I'm just going to let you know I'm using a Windows Server machine. So my machine might look a little different than yours. It's still running Windows and it's still going to operate the same, so it's not a big deal. So the first step is to come over to Plex and get the info that we need, like the EXE and everything else. So I'm over here on my machine. This is actually my Windows Server machine. If you uh, come over here, you can see that I have Server Manager on here. It is running Windows Server 2019. I'll show you really quick in Proxmox what I have. So here in Proxmox, you see I have DC01, just what I call my Windows Server machine. Just kind of follow the name and scheme that we use at work on our servers. Uh, this was just a Windows Server 2019 machine that I spun up last week. I was actually working on another project with it, but it didn't work out. I might use this machine for some other stuff in my lab in the future, but it's just a simple Windows machine. It's got four gigs of RAM, four cores, uh, 75 gigs of storage and that's really it your machine can be windows 10 i believe we could use windows 11 as well but we're going to double check on that if you have any questions about how to set up the windows machine to use in proxmox i'll have a card up in the corner about how to set up windows 10 i also have a video of how to set up windows 11 in proxmox if you're interested in that as well i'm not really going to go over windows server because i just feel like it's redundant but i just wanted to show you what i'm running for my machine Okay, so now we went over the Proxmox stuff. We're gonna go into uh, Plex. So if I come over to Plex Media, you can see over here it has the download and it actually comes over here and it says Windows 10. If I Google Plex Media Server Windows Requirements, it'll give us a little bit of a different information. So it pretty much, Plex really supports a lot of stuff. I wish the page just kind of had everything, you know, more right there. I mean, I bet if I click around a little bit, it'll give me everything I need to know, but that's okay. Um, so we come over here, it supports Windows, Mac, Linux, the NVIDIA Shield, Netgear Nighthawk, runs on a router. I, I guess you can run Plex on a router if you're interested. I didn't know a router could have that much storage, but yeah, here you go. Okay, and you can run on NASs, of course, which we've covered in the past. But if we scroll down over here, it says that we can run Windows 10 or Windows Server 2016 as long as it's version 1607 or newer for both. So my Windows Server 2019 is going to work and anything for Windows 10 is going to work for you. I'm assuming Windows 11 is going to work as well. No guarantees. If you want to give it a shot and see if it works, go ahead. If it doesn't, you could comment below and let me know about it. I'm going to bet it will. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just a newer version. But if we come through over here, it just says that you need like an i3 or equivalent or better. Better is always, you know, if you get like an i5, probably sound a little bit better. Really, what we're going to try to do is we're going to see about building out this machine to be like a full-blown media server. So if you, you know, are searching like eBay or Marketplace nearby, and you can find someone with like a i5, maybe four cores, four threads, that'd be a pretty good machine to build off of to do this. RAM, it says you only need four gigs. I gave my machine four gigs, but if you can get like eight gigs, it'd probably work out better. It really depends on what your server's gonna be hosted for. You know, if you're gonna have a lot of people streaming from it. And we also need to keep in mind that we are using Windows for this machine. So Windows is gonna use a lot of the RAM and the CPU, but then using a Linux distribution, but that's okay. Just keep in mind when you're getting your hardware spec out for your server, what you're getting, make sure you have something that's sufficient. Go back over to the downloads page. I'm gonna select Windows. You can see all the other stuff that's in here. They actually have Docker containers. So if you wanna run it off a Docker environment, you could too. Not the most efficient way to do it, but let's just focus on Windows today. So I'm going to click Windows, and I'm going to choose my distro, and I'm going to use the 64-bit version. I'm just going to download that, and we'll give it a second to download, and then I'm just going to open up the folder. We're going to close out of this. So this is my downloads folder. The only other thing I ever I did was I made this Plex folder over here, and in here I made TVs and movies. So this is going to be our directories for when it comes to... Um, send a Plex, the folders for Plex. You'll see this in a few minutes. Okay, so I'm going to minimize this folder for now, and I'm going to go back to my downloads. Uh, okay, here we go. I'm going to go to my downloads, and here's Plex server. I'm just going to run it as administrator, just for uh, to make sure everything runs the way I need it to. 
you could probably run it normally, but I'm gonna run it as admin just so I can make sure it gets all the permissions it needs. It's gonna come up with the window. Now I've never actually ran Plex on Windows, so this is new to me, but I've seen a lot of people do it and I know it works and it is a little bit simpler because everybody uses Windows. We're gonna click next. Now we're gonna pick where it's gonna be installed, so that's fine. It's gonna go in program files. It's pretty much where every program installs. That's fine with me. We're just going to leave a lot of this stuff default. So we're going to click install. Let's install and we'll be right back. The install was really quick and it's all done already and it's checked off to open it up. So let's open up Plex Media Server. So we'll give this a second to open up. It's just going to open up right to the local host so it works out really well. So I'm just going to sign in and then we'll be right back. Okay, so after you sign in, you're going to come over to this. This is the first window that popped up. If you need to make an account, you can. It will just have like a create account or you could sign in with a Google account or you can, you know, make it with your email, however it is. And then this will be your first page when you go to do a setup. So I'm just going to click accept. And it's pretty much the same as any other setup for Plex. We're going to have our main page and I'm just going to give it a second so we can finish initializing and then we'll keep going. In the meantime, I'm just curious about how much resources that the Plex server is currently reusing. So if I come over here, I can actually, I just open up Task Manager, and these are all the processes. So Plex really isn't using a lot of uh, memory right now, and it's using barely any CPU, so I'm pretty content with that. I actually have Brave using the majority of all my memory, which is normal, it's, it's Chromium. Uh, I'm still waiting on this to initialize, so once this is done, we'll keep going with the setup. Okay, so it seems that when I finished the Plex install, and it opened up like the EXE, it just opened up to the actual Plex site, it didn't open up to like the local host. So because of that, Plex couldn't actually connect to my server, and that's why I kept having that initializing. So when you finish your install, you're just going to grab your IP address, and then you're going to go to the IP address colon 32400, that's the Plex port. I'll show you that in a second, but that will open up the actual web interface, and then you can start setting up your Plex server. Okay, so like I was saying, like my machine's hosted on uh, 192.168.50.215. But your machine is going to be whatever your IP address is for it. So whatever the IP of your machine, and then it's going to be colon 32400. That'll bring you over to this page. It would ask you to sign in, and then we can start doing the setup. So it's just telling us how Plex works. I'm going to click got it. And then it's going to tell us about Plex Pass. I do recommend getting Plex Pass if you're actually going to host your server off of it. I got the lifetime pass, and it's, it's just great. It gives you extra benefits like transcoding, media download to your devices, stuff like that. So you could look into it and check it out, but, I'm um, you know, I recommend getting Plex Pass if you're going to run your server long term. So I'm going to keep it DCO1, that's fine with me, and then it says allow me to access my media outside my home. So Plex will try to configure your network for you, most likely it won't be able to. Usually you'll have to open up the port in the firewall for Plex to actually be able to reach out and in, so you'll have to do that afterwards, but I'll just keep that checked off for now. We'll click next. Now you can add a library, so this is where that folder on my desktop that I made before will come into play. So I'm going to click add library, we're going to click movies. Next, and we're going to browse. So I'm going to go to desktop, Plex, movies, and we're just going to click add. We're going to click add again, and we can add the library again, and we'll do TV shows. We keep it TV shows, desktop, Plex, and we'll click add. Add it one more time. Now, of course, you could have put this folder wherever you want if you have like a network share that you're running. You know, if you run a NAS, and let's say you have it in your network share. I, I don't have any shares on this PC right now, so I can't do it. But you know, if you have your NAS mounted, you could do it that way. Or if you want to host a share off your Windows box, you could do that as well. You could just go in and make a, a folder and click it to become shareable. I'm pretty sure I could do it with this. Uh, property, I think I could do it this way. Sharing. And then you could just share it across your network. So it would be the same way. But now our two shares are set up for our media. Of course, you could add anything else. They also support music, photos, and other so if you have other videos like, um, I don't know, cooking videos that you make or whatever it is, you could put those in here and you could stream them on Plex. I'm going to click next because now we're all set with this. You can get the Plex app. So this is be, you know, the app for your phone or your tablet or whatever it is. So you can check those out. Click done. And now our server is all set. So now our Plex server is actually running off our Windows box and it's, it's all set. We're good to go. I want to open up resources again, see what's going on. So we're still doing pretty good. Um, I'm going to end PTRG because I'm not using that. But if I look, Plex is using very little memory. I still have Brave using all my memory, so we're all good. Now, if you want to add TV shows or whatever to your shares, that's fine. 
you could just come back over to that folder you made before. If you have some movies, maybe you ripped them in the DVD rip video that I made. You know, you have your DVDs and you just want to make them so you have digital copies. You could put your movies now in this folder and you could watch all your movies on Plex instead of using a DVD player now. Same thing with TV shows. If you have the TV show discs, you could make them digital and put them on your Plex server. When you do, you can come over to movies and they'll have your data over here. The cool thing about Plex, it also has live TV, which is completely free with it. And Plex is a free service, so you don't have to pay to get anything else. There is still commercials. There's some local stuff that you could find based on your area. But they have stuff like that. They also have free movies that cycle through every month and TV shows. So you could take a look through here and you can figure out you know, if there's anything you want to watch. But they do have stuff in here that you can watch as well. There's Plex Discover. Um, you take a look. I guess you know it tries to cater it towards your what you might like. I guess I'm guessing as you start watching stuff on Plex. But yeah, that's really it. There's music, and here's your Plex server. So it's completely running off of your Windows machine. So yeah, super simple to get Plex running on a Windows machine. Like I said, I ran it on a Windows Server machine. That's just because I had Windows Server already spun up on my server. Uh, I virtualized it last week, and that's why we just ran with that for this video. You could use Windows. You can use Windows 10, no problem. That's actually what Plex suggests, and I'm gonna bet you could probably use Windows 11 as well. So if you want to do that, you can too. And that's how we set up Plex on our Windows machine. So I also people asked about this a while back, so I'm glad I can get this all done. And now this tutorial's out there for anybody who might need it. Uh, I will have some links below to all my gear that I use in my home lab. It'll be all Amazon links if you want to check those out. You can use the same gear that I use. I also have a link to my Discord server if you want to come there. We can chat about projects or anything else you might be working on. If you could drop a like, comment, and subscribe, it really helps the channel grow and it helps so more people see our videos. Uh, I appreciate everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next video.